Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this live premiere. Uh, my live streaming software has been giving me some problems over the course of the past week, so I'm going to try this format out. Obviously, it is slightly pre-recorded. But we got a lot to talk about today, so let's hop right over to our convective outlooks and go to day one. And since my video that was posted uh, in the early afternoon today, we actually have had a large enhanced risk upgrade across portions of South Dakota and North Dakota into Northern Minnesota as well. This is that level three out of five risk. Severe storms are what most likely across this area. This is primarily going to be for a threat of significant damaging winds and large hail. There is a small possibility of a couple tornadoes with the most concentrated tornado threat being in this brown shaded region, but can't be completely ruled out in this green area as well, which actually expands all the way into extreme southeastern Manitoba and western uh, Ontario as well. But damaging winds is definitely a primary concern along with large hail. And these black hatch regions here, this is where you could be looking at some significant severe weather. So that is certainly on the table today. Now at the moment, we currently have a severe thunderstorm watch that has just been issued across portions of South Dakota into Nebraska and eastern Wyoming here. Uh, low to very low tornado and significant tornado threat here, but the primary hazards across this area will be damaging winds and large hail. Some of the hail could even potentially get up to over baseball size, and we could maybe see a couple gusts to 80 miles per hour in this area here, which does include Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, not quite making it into Pierre, South Dakota, but that area certainly has a good chance of severe weather later today. Um, and it, as you can see here, several supercells should develop across eastern Wyoming into northwest Nebraska before spreading into western South Dakota into the early evening. A couple of those supercells could actually be long track, meaning they'll be ongoing for a long time. That is certainly a possibility across this watch area. And we have another severe thunderstorm watch that is likely to be issued here from northeastern South Dakota into northwestern uh, Minnesota here. A watch will be issued this afternoon. A tornado or two is possible, but large to very large hail and significant damaging wind gusts will be our primary hazards. Initially, we're probably going to see semi-discrete supercells developing in the 3 to 5 p.m. time frame, uh, 3 to 5 p.m. central time time frame. Uh, but those storms likely will grow up scale into either supercell clusters or Boeing line segments, and those will be capable of producing damaging wind gusts in excess of 75 miles per hour. So we got a lot going on here. Let's hop over to the models and see what's uh, and see what we can expect. And we are speeding this up to 4 p.m. Eastern or 3 p.m. Central this afternoon with the high resolution rapid reflash model. And uh, this is our composite reflectivity, what the radar is expected to look like according to the model. Uh, we are we also are going to look at the radar briefly towards the end of the stream. Uh, but we, we are expecting some supercell thunderstorms here across eastern Wyoming. It's a southeastern Montana and western uh, portions of Nebraska and South Dakota by this time period here ongoing right now. And let's take a look at the ingredients that we have in place. First off, our moisture. Now, you can always expect lesser moisture over here across the high plains. The more favorable warm sector is going to be located across eastern Nebraska into southern Minnesota. That's also where your most favorable low-level wind shear is going to be as well. But we're not seeing many storms developing in this area. If we see any storms at all, it's all going to be north of that boundary. And because of that, there's not a very high tornado threat today. It would probably be a lot higher if we did see storms out here in the open warm sector matching with the increasing low level jet but at the moment these storms are primarily elevated and they're also going to be um working with more limited low level wind shear what they will have a lot of in terms of shear is going to be mid-level winds so we do have a pretty sharp trough ejection here with uh mid-level winds at 500 millibars coming out of the southwest we're looking at winds at, at the mid-levels here between 50 and 60 knots feeding into these thunderstorms here helping to raise the shear in the surrounding area and that is going to help storm organization. It's going to help these storms begin to rotate across the high plains here. Uh, that is the situation that we are currently seeing. But by this point, here's your low-level jet or winds at uh, 850 millibars. And again, you'll notice that most of the stronger low-level winds uh, and, and the southerly low-level winds are across eastern Nebraska into southern Minnesota, where that open warm sector with the low 70s dew points is located. This would be a very favorable environment for tornadoes, most likely, uh, if we did see storms developing in that area. But it's displaced from the axis of mid-level winds, and we're not seeing many storms firing in this area. So that definitely lowers the tornado threat a little bit today, where these stronger southerly, southerly low-level winds are located. 
But with strong mid-level wins like we have, there is enough to aid Storm Organization with a little bit of low-level shear feeding into these storms as well. Expect an elevated storm mode. If we go over uh, to our lifted condensation level, or LCL, let's see here, let's go over to this. You can see uh, that we have pretty high LCLs here across uh, Nebraska into South Dakota, Wyoming, uh, into even Montana as well. The higher LCLs that we have means that we're seeing cloud bases that are higher off the ground. The higher and higher that we go, the more elevated that those storms are getting. It makes it a lot harder for those storms to produce tornadoes, but doesn't have much of an impact on the hail threat. Large hail is going to be a significant concern and probably the most substantial concern at this time from these developing supercells. And because there is substantial wind shear in the area for supercell thunderstorms to develop, we can expect that this is pretty likely to happen. But it's going to be pretty based off of kinematics. We see a little bit of higher cape across eastern Wyoming where these storms are located, generally below 1,000 up to 1,000 in spots. Uh, but again, most of the cape, most of the instability is going to be located to the east across that open warm sector. Uh, where the stronger low-level winds are, and that is not where we are seeing storms at this time, and it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing them in that area throughout the entire cycle. But you definitely got some pretty intense storms here, especially across East Wyoming into Northwestern Nebraska, or into the Nebraska Panhandle, I should say. Uh, the ARRR is showing a pretty quick upscale growth over here as we get towards the 5 p.m. hour, but it does have these new initial semi-discrete storms like the SPC was talking about in southeastern North Dakota by 5 p.m. as well. And I do believe that these storms will have more favorable moisture to work with than the high plains storms over here. Uh, you're looking at 70s dew points being quite likely out in that area. Your actual air temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s to even uh, potentially over 90 degrees. Still relatively elevated given that relatively high separation. Uh, but you definitely got more favorable moisture, more favorable instability over there. And I think you're still going to have a pretty good axis of wind shear over in this area as well. So as with many of these events, uh, the storms over here across the high plains are going to have likely better kinematics from a mid-level standpoint. Uh, but the storms up here in southeastern North Dakota are still going to have enough of it to help storm organization. And they're also going to have quite a bit more instability in that area as well. Um... We got several storms firing up in that region. And if you look in the middle of this here, you see these cores that are showing these purple and white colors. Again, this is not exactly what the radar is going to look like, but that is indicating some very, very large hail in those areas. Let's go ahead and pull a sounding here from southeastern South Dakota by 5 p.m. Central. And you can see, uh, going over here, you got temperatures around 90 degrees, dew points at 70 degrees here. That's definitely a separation, maybe helping these storms go a little bit higher off the ground than you would see in traditional tornadic supercells. Your hodograph picture over here, this is, a direct, this is a chart basically of the change in direction and wind speed as you get higher up into the atmosphere. You have a zero plotted over here, which basically is, is at the ground level. So if you were to draw a straight line from across the screen over to this zero, it would be coming out of the northwest because you'd have to draw a line down from here to get to that zero on the bottom of the screen. So you got northwesterly surface winds. Your one is located over here, so now you have to draw a straight line from the bottom of the screen up through here. So you have surface winds coming out of the northwest. And you have low-level winds from 0 to 1 kilometers above the ground coming out of the southeast. That's definitely a pretty substantial change. These northwesterly winds also are not going to be favorable for tornadoes. You have your 6 plotted over here, which you can barely see on the screen. These are coming out of the southwest. So from that standpoint, from a low to mid-level standpoint, you definitely have some uh, favorable change in direction. But those surface winds coming out of the northwest are not going to be favorable for tornadoes. This is a relatively straight-line hodograph as well, meaning you're not seeing that super tall curved hodograph that would generally be favorable in terms of kinematics for tornadoes. And again, those surface winds are definitely raising the question. But I would definitely foresee some very large hail potential with this. You got very high cape, over 3,000 from a surface standpoint. You got favorable dew points. Um, and you're going to have favorable deep layer shear as well. Low level winds are very weak, which again is also going to be another limiting factor for the tornado threat coming out of the southeast. Uh, but this is certainly going to help raise the potential for elevated supercells, most likely, uh, that are going to likely be producing some very large, significant hail. And as we get a couple hours later, towards about 7 p.m. Central, here's the situation being depicted by the HRRR. You got these messy storms here across central North South Dakota. 
It's a southwestern North Dakota. These storms definitely still in a favorable environment for severe weather, and you've already likely got an upscale growth into a cluster of supercells or a Boeing line segment in northwestern Minnesota by the 7 p.m. hour. Now, again, your moisture is going to be likely better to the, for these eastern storms because even up towards the Manitoba and Ontario border, you're looking at dew points around 70 degrees or at least into the upper 60s, whereas out here across the uh, high plains into the Dakotas, your moisture is a lot less. But again, in the primary zone for the warm sector across central Minnesota into southwestern Iowa, that's also where your strengthening low-level jet is located. What you'll notice is that's not where these storms are located. Uh, where the storms are located, you got northwesterly and westerly low-level winds here. And your stronger southerly low-level jet is displaced to the south of this area of thunderstorms. So that is lowering the tornado threat for sure. Um, but I think that if some storms can catch the, the northern flank of this increasing southerly low-level jet, there is the possibility of maybe a tornado or two. They said a couple tornadoes possible from northeastern South Dakota into northwestern Iowa, that, or northwestern Minnesota, sorry, that's your primary area of concern. And that would make sense because that is where the storms are getting a little bit too close for comfort to this low-level jet here. And we definitely have to watch some isolated tornado potential with this. The storms over here in the western Dakotas and the Nebraska Panhandle are also making their own stronger low-level winds here coming out of the west. You got westerly 850 millibar winds. And going over to composite reflectivity, here's kind of your situation at this point. Now, if I were to pull a sounding out ahead of this cluster here in northwest Minnesota, you can see here it says marginal tornado potential. You got northwesterly uh, surface winds, again, with a pretty oddly shaped photograph here. You got a little bit of curvature if you were to start it over here from the 1 to 6, but it's just, it's a strangely shaped photograph, that's for sure. This is going to be a little bit different in terms of thermodynamics from the last sounding that I pulled because you don't got a lot of uh, you don't got a lot of separation here. These probably are going to be more surface-based storms with dew points around 70, air temperatures in the upper 70s here. You don't got much of an elevated mix layer at this point. You do have some strong deep layer shear. You got some generally strong low-level shear out ahead of those, uh, out ahead of that cluster in northwest Minnesota as well, uh, but it is questionable in terms of the surface winds that are going to be coming out of the northwest here. Probably not all that favorable for tornadoes, but certainly does look very favorable of general severe weather. You could definitely be looking at some very strong winds associated with both of these lines, and also, um, of course, that very large hail potential as well. You have a disorganized line trying to form as we get towards the 9 p.m. hour. Here would be the situation by 10 p.m. And look at this, these couple of clusters here. You got this one in northern Minnesota still ongoing and this other one located just to the west of it. Now the HRRR is showing some extremely strong winds along that line. Look at that. Now the SBC already outlined the possibility of 80 to 90 mile per hour winds. And look at this. You got winds of 85 to 90 plus miles per hour here. Certainly a possibility across the eastern portion of the Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota border here. That is a possibility by about 10 p.m. Central Time as we see this increase in the upscale growth of these storms as they form into a squall line. Definitely possible to see a swath of significant wind damage across the Dakotas, potentially even into Minnesota as well. Let's see how the Minneapolis-St. Paul area gets affected. Matter of fact, let's go back to the SBC real quick and kind of see where they are on that scale. Um, so Minneapolis-St. Paul has a marginal risk in place for severe weather. Near zero tornado potential. It looks like for the Minneapolis-St. Paul region, you would be looking at damaging winds as your primary concern. That would make sense. You do have some storms approaching from the northwest as you get towards the midnight hour. Here would be the situation by 2 p.m., but these storms are really crumpling once they get past the MSP metro area here. The possibility of severe weather is there, but it should remain fairly isolated, and these storms should weaken in intensity as the nighttime goes along with the loss of daytime heating and other factors in play. So let's do a quick radar loop of what this was, uh, what the ARRR is showing here to give you guys an idea of what to expect. So again, as we go hour by hour here, you have these super, well, let me go back. That's, that's too fast. Let's go to loop speed a little bit slower. So as we go hour by hour, you got these supercells here in Wyoming uh, that are going to continue to track off to the northeast. They're likely going to grow up scale before a new round of storms develops in southeast North Dakota. That moves off to the northeast. 
uh, forming into likely a Boeing line segment in northwestern Minnesota. Then they join forces as we get towards the late evening uh, into the overnight hours, possibly some significant wind damage in their wake across the Dakotas into Minnesota. Um, and we definitely need to watch the potential for this, but it looks like another situation where we're going to see two areas of supercells develop. Again, one of them in East Wyoming, another in Southeast North Dakota. Both of those will develop into line segments for the evening, and then they'll join forces to become an organized, very intense swath of damaging wind here. A big windbag event likely to take place later on this evening into the overnight hours. So that's what we can expect according to the HRRR. The new SBC outlook will probably be already up by the time that this premiere goes up. And we'll see what they do from there. But at the moment, and I know this will be invalid by the time that the premiere gets posted, but let me just show you what the situation is. It's currently 2.38 p.m. Central Time by the time that I'm making this video. You've already got some storms here across southeastern Wyoming into the, the Nebraska Panhandle that are severe. They are exhibiting supercell characteristics to them. We have severe thunderstorm warnings with them for 60 mile an hour winds and quarter sized hail. Um, this is right along the Wyoming Nebraska border. Let's go over to Velocity really quick to kind of see what we're dealing with. The radar network isn't too great out here. Yeah, it's going to kind of be tough to see it, but you get the general idea. We currently have um, those thunderstorms already developing in Nebraska into southeastern Wyoming, and we have even more severe thunderstorm warnings to the north. Let's take a look at this one up here in North in South Dakota. And we'll see kind of what these do from here, but you definitely got another area of stronger thunderstorms along the North Dakota, South Dakota border. Um, and those storms are going to likely increase in intensity as we get further along into the afternoon. But as it stands, expect two areas of, th of severe thunderstorms to develop, both starting super cellular and then forming into line segments. So, that is going to wrap it up for this uh, premiere, guys. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. And also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. But until the next video or premiere, stay safe and I'll talk to you guys back here next time.